All M&Ms are supposed to taste the same, but a lot of people still associate the different colors with a different flavor. Personally, I like the blue ones. So if I have this bowl of peanut butter M&Ms and I randomly pick one out without looking, what's the probability that the M&M I pick is blue? Unfortunately, this one isn't blue, but let's get into figuring out that probability. Hi, I'm Jen, and today I'm explaining the probability formula using M&Ms, and then we'll look at how to calculate it in Excel. So let's study this bowl of M&Ms to figure out the probability of selecting one M&M at random and it being blue. A probability distribution is a list of all of the possible outcomes of selecting a random value and the probable value that it will occur. So when we talk about finding a blue M&M, we have six different options for that variable result. We could have blue, we could have green, we could have orange, and so on. But we know that no matter which M&M we pick out, it's going to have one of these colors. For today, I'm only concerned about the color of the first M&M I pick out of the bowl. I don't care what happens after that. This is called marginal probability. We'll look at other types of probability in future videos. When we write about probability, we note this by using a capital P and then in parentheses, an X or the value that we're looking for. We call this P of X, or in our case, we want P of blue. What's the probability that the M&M that we select is blue? Your probability will always be between zero and one. If we talk about the probability of pulling a blue M&M out of this bowl, a zero probability would mean that we had a bowl that actually didn't have any blue M&Ms in it. And a probability of one would be if all we had in the bowl were blue M&Ms. But we know the reality is somewhere in between. To find probability, we're going to start out doing the same exercise that we did with the frequency distribution. That is dividing our M&Ms up into our different groups and then counting up the number of times they occur. So I've separated out all of my M&Ms into the different colors and counted up the number of each color. Taking our frequency distribution table one one step further, we're able to create a probability distribution. To do this, you take the number in each particular outcome and you divide it by the total number of possible outcomes. So I'll take my total number of blue M&Ms and divide it by the total M&Ms in our sample, our bowl of 159. The value I get is the probability of selecting one M&M from the bowl and it being blue, or as we go through each of the frequencies, the probability of it being red or orange. This is an example of a discrete univariate probability distribution with finite support. That's a lot of words, so let's look at what they mean. Discrete means that each value will fit into only one category. We can have a green M&M or we can have a red M&M, but we can't have an M&M that's half green and half red. It's green or it's red. Univariate means that we're only looking at one variable. So while we could also look at the weight of these M&Ms or we could even consider is the M that's printed on them fully intact, the only thing we care about for this particular distribution is what the color of the M&M is. So that's our discrete univariate probability distribution. What does finite support mean? Finite support means there's a limited number of values that the variable can take on. So in our case, there are six colors and each M&M is going to be one of those colors. We can't have, we're not going to reach into this bag and be surprised by pulling out a purple M&M because there are no purple M&Ms in this bag. There are six different options for the colors. So that's what makes this probability distribution a distinct univariate probability distribution with finite support. To answer our question on what's the probability of pulling a blue M&M out of this bowl if I select one at random, let's go to our table. Based on this, we know that the probability of selecting blue is 22 divided by 159 because there's 22 in the total population of blue and 159 in the total population of M&Ms in this container. So this gives us a probability of 0.138 or we could also say that as 13.8%.
Let's look at how to calculate probability in Excel. We have our data in the spreadsheet about each M&M. I gathered this data when I made the intro to stats video. Now we're going to start by setting up a table with labels for each color of M&M that's contained within our data. I always like to start with a labeled table when I'm looking at different data because then I know exactly what I've calculated beside it. Once we have our table set up, we'll start by calculating the frequency, just like we did last week. In this case, we're calculating how many of each color that we have. To do this, I'm using the formula count if to calculate how many M&Ms there are of each color within our data set. The count if formula works by selecting which data you want to look at. This is called the range. And then you specify the condition, when should you count that data as a single data point? We'll use cell references to do this. Next to red, I'll put in the formula count if, and then I'll select column A, and my condition is red, which is in cell D4. Once I've entered this formula, I can copy it down to the rest of the colors. I like to put a totals field at the bottom to check that everything adds up. I know there are 159 M&Ms in the package and I'm expecting that when I sum up all of the colors, I should have 159. If I get something other than this, it means I probably missed something in my data. Either the way the color names are formatted are wrong or I missed putting something into my data. In this case, we didn't miss anything. Now let's calculate the probability. We've already talked about finding probability by dividing the number of favorable or desirable outcomes by the total number of possible outcomes. In this case, we're dividing the total number of red M&Ms, which is cell E4, by the total number of M&Ms in our population, which is cell E10. I'm leaving the reference to the number of red M&Ms as a relative reference, meaning if we copy this formula to another cell, it will change and take the cell that is in the same relative position as the red frequency count was. However, on the total, I'm making it an absolute reference by adding these dollar signs in front. This means that as we move the formula to other cells, it won't change anything. I'm going to clean this up a bit by dropping my decimals down two places and copying this formula to the other cells. Again, we're summing up the probabilities under the total and I'm expecting the value to be one. We can also look at probabilities as a column chart. This can make it easier to see some of the differences. Sometimes visualizing data like this can help us understand where there are differences and similarities. When we look at this chart with probability on it, it's very clear that there's not a big amount of difference in the probability of pulling an orange, yellow, green, or blue, but there is a higher probability of removing a brown or red M&M as the first M&M from the sample. Now we know the probability of pulling a blue M&M at random out of this bowl on our first pick. But how does this compare to all of the peanut butter M&Ms that are made and how those colors may differ from M&M to M&M? Is this a representative sample of all peanut butter M&Ms? Next week, we're going to look at sample size and how that can directly impact the results of your statistical analysis and in some cases, give you a false impression. Thanks so much for watching.